ever taken a tumble, landed awkwardly, and felt that surge of pain in your hip? Yeah, definitely not something you want to ignore. Could be a dislocation. And we're diving into how those are handled in emergency medicine. It's a surprisingly complex area. We've got a medical paper here that breaks down various techniques for putting a dislocated hip back in place. Right, because it's not as simple as just popping it back in, is it? Not at all. There's a lot more to it than you might think. So to start off, for those who might not be familiar with the ins and outs of hip anatomy, can you give us a quick rundown of what exactly happens when a hip is dislocated? Sure. So the hip joint is this amazing ball and socket structure. Right. Designed for a wide range of motion. Exactly. And that same flexibility makes it vulnerable to injury. So when we talk about a dislocated hip, what we're really talking about is that ball the head of the femur being forced out of the socket, which is part of the pelvis. Exactly. And it's not just the bones that are affected either, right? Right. We've got ligaments, tendons, nerves, yeah. blood vessels. All those structures can be impacted. So it's a serious injury. It is. And that's why prompt medical attention is crucial. Absolutely. Mm. So how do we go about getting that joint back in place quickly and correctly? Well, that's where these techniques for hip dislocation reduction come in. Right, so that's what this paper is all about. Yeah, and it focuses specifically on closed reduction techniques. Closed reduction meaning? It means the doctor is trying to manipulate the joint back into its proper position without open surgery. So no cutting involved. Not in these cases. It's all about precise movements and using anatomical knowledge to guide that femoral head back into the socket. Like solving a 3D puzzle from the outside in. Kind of like that, yeah. And the paper actually outlines quite a few different techniques. Yeah, there are a lot of options. Which I guess makes sense because no two hip dislocations are exactly alike. Exactly. Every patient is unique and so is their injury. So the physician has to consider the specific anatomy, the direction and severity of the dislocation, even the patient's position when it happened. All those factors play a role in deciding which technique will be most effective. So it's like having a toolkit with different tools for different situations. That's a great way to put it. And part of the skill of being a physician in this situation is knowing which tool to use. Absolutely. And that comes with training experience and a careful assessment of the individual patient. So we've established that there's this whole toolkit of techniques for hip dislocation reduction. But how does a physician actually decide which one to use in the moment? Yeah, it's a bit of a judgment call. Like, is there a flow chart they follow or is it more based on experience? It's a combination of both, really. There are some general guidelines, of course. Okay. But a lot of it comes down to the physician's assessment of the situation in real time. Makes sense. The paper does highlight a few of the most common techniques, though, for both posterior and anterior dislocations. Oh, interesting. What are some of the techniques that come up most often? Well, for posterior dislocations, which are more common, by the way, the author seems to really like the Rochester method. The Rochester method. What's the thinking behind that preference? Mm. They mention that it offers good control and stability during the reduction. Which seems pretty important when you're trying to maneuver a joint back into place. Exactly. So how does this Rochester method actually work? Okay, so picture this. The patient is lying on their back with both legs bent. Okay. The physician stands on the side of the injured hip and uses their arm to kind of cradle the patient's uninjured leg. Creating like a support system. Yeah, exactly. A, a sort of triangular support. Clever. And the injured leg is flexed over the doctor's forearm. Got it. Then with their other hand, they grip the ankle of the injured leg and apply traction, which is essentially pulling on it. To create some space, I imagine. Exactly. And the key to the Rochester method is that they combine that traction with both internal and external rotation of the hip, carefully guiding it back into place. Sounds like a delicate dance almost. It really is. It requires a lot of precision and a deep understanding of how the joint moves. Definitely. Now, I noticed the paper also mentioned some other techniques with pretty interesting names like the Captain Morgan and the piggyback. Right. Those caught my eye, too. Any idea what those involve just from the names? Well, while the paper doesn't go into a ton of detail, I'm guessing they might have something to do with using the physician's body weight to help with the reduction. Interesting. So using their own body as a tool. Exactly. Leverage and body mechanics can be really useful in these situations. Makes you appreciate the physicality of what these doctors do. For sure. So we've talked about posterior dislocations, which you said are more common. Mm. What about anterior dislocations where the hip is displaced toward the front? Are those handled with the same techniques? That's a good question, and it highlights another layer of complexity here. How so? Anterior dislocations, while less frequent, often present a bigger challenge. In what way? They often require 
different positioning and sometimes even modifications to those techniques we just talked about. So you can't just use the same playbook? Not always. You, you really have to adapt to the specific type of dislocation. Each with its own unique challenge. Exactly. And that leads us to a really interesting part of the paper. It goes beyond just listing the techniques. Oh, does it actually show how one is used in a real case? It does. They present a case study using a Waddell technique, which is actually kind of a hybrid approach. A hybrid approach. So the Waddell technique takes bits and pieces from other techniques and combines them. Exactly. It's like a greatest hits compilation. So what makes it stand out? Why focus on this one in the case study? Well, one thing that really struck me was how it's designed to minimize strain on the physician. Oh, interesting because these maneuvers can be physically demanding, right? Yeah, you're using your whole body to apply force. So you don't want the doctor getting injured while they're trying to help the patient. Exactly, and that's where the Waddell technique comes in. So how does it actually work? Walk me through it. Okay, so imagine the physician is positioned above the patient okay. with their legs sort of flanking the injured leg. Got it. They use their forearm to support the patient's leg just behind the knee. Right. And here's the interesting part. They lean back using their own body weight to apply traction to the femur. Wow, so that like a counterweight almost. Exactly. It's mm. a really clever use of leverage. And does it work? Well, in their case study, they had a pretty good success rate. What do you mean? They reported 20 successful reductions using this technique. And no complications. And none mentioned in the paper. That's incredible. And probably a relief for the physicians, too, knowing they can do this without risking their own well-being. Absolutely. That's a huge factor that often gets overlooked. Yeah, it's not just about the patient's safety, but the physician's as well. Exactly. So I imagine even with a technique like this that's designed to be more ergonomic, a lot still comes down to the skill of the physician. Oh, absolutely. Experience matters a lot in these situations. And every dislocation is different. You know, so many variables at play. Makes you realize that this paper is just a tiny glimpse into a very complex field. It is. It's fascinating though, isn't it? It really is. Mm -hmm. It's amazing what you can learn from just one medical paper. Right. The human body is incredible and finding ways to put it back together when it goes wrong is pretty remarkable. It really is. Well, that's about all the time we have for today's deep dive, but I hope this has given you a new appreciation for the complexities of hip dislocation reduction. And the skill of the physicians who perform these procedures. Absolutely. To all our listeners out there, if this conversation has piqued your interest, I encourage you to do some more digging. Explore the world of musculoskeletal anatomy. There's a whole universe of medical knowledge out there. And who knows what you might discover. Until next time, keep those brains engaged and keep on diving deep.